Hiya folks, another couple of little tinkering jobs to do on the Monday RST. I want to get them little silver things off of the steering wheel. You know the things that have worn out their colour, the silver's rubbed off them. I want to get them off, get them sprayed and stuff like that. And I might have a go at doing the lights in the dashboard as well. I might pull that out and have a look. Look how good these wheels look. There we go, just had it cleaned yesterday. It was in a bit of a state the other day, as you probably remember. But here, look at these now. They really look good once they've had a clean. I had it done by a, a local uh, company that does the old uh, car valeting. You're only in there for about 15 minutes, if that, and uh, they give the car a good going over. On the outside, not the inside, they do the old tyre blacking as well. But the centre wheel hubs, as you can see there, look absolutely fantastic now. And I'm so glad that I had these done silver, because as you remember, when I bought the car not so long back, they was uh, white. And they looked a bit gaudy to me, but uh, I'm sure you'll agree that it does look very nice. This, uh, I think it's performance blue, this one is. So, uh, yeah, there we go. I'm well happy with it. And uh, just got to keep it clean. Anyway, let's open up the uh, folding mirrors now, just by opening the door. As you can see, that's working now. I had that done in the last video. Uh, let's just get in here for a minute because I want to get these uh, little silver wheel trim uh, wheel trims these silver steering wheel trims off because as you can see they've lost their color there and i didn't know these come off but apparently there's a seam on the back there i hope you can see that there just then you're supposed to be able to just get a screwdriver in there and uh clip them off so we'll have a little go oh i've lifted the top one up a little bit there we go oh hello. what's that on there there we go oh there we go that's pinged, pinged off that's the bottom one, as you can see it. I thought I might have broken it, but uh, I haven't. And the front one just eases out. So there you go, that's the fitment of them, look. So I managed to ping the top one out first, and uh, then the bottom one come out afterwards. I would imagine these are handed as well, so you can't just take them off and put them back on anywhere. Outside OL could mean outside left. That is the left side, and that one's got OL written on it as well. So that's them two. So if I just put them back together anyway, there's one. So I will take them apart to paint. I just want to keep them together because um, I'm not too sure on how the uh, they do come off. So that's ten tended to work. I pinged off one side first. Well, I'll tell you what, let me do the bottom one here. I don't think you're going to be able to see this at all. Oh, look, you can see that, I think. Maybe, can you see that? I've just sort of pushed it at an angle. Got in there. there we go, the top one's pinged off. Once I've got the top one pinged off, I'm prizing the second one down. And I think that just popped out, didn't it? It's not very easy to do, I must say. There we go, it does come off like that. It just pings off. And then the top one, you have to sort of manhandle out. Yeah, so I'll, if I was putting these back, I'd put the top one in first and then clip the back one on afterwards. And this one, oh, under left. That must be OL, over left. And this one's under left. So there you go. So it's under and over left. So yeah, over left, under left. So this should be OR and that should be UR. Again, going in at the corner. Hard for you to see, I know, but... Oh, it's hard for me to see if I don't move over. Then you've got to sort of pull the back one off. Once you pull the back one off, and then you can sort of just tip the front one out. There you are, over right. That says OR, so that's over right. So I find going at a corner first, and then you pull the back one off and snap the back one off, and then tip these out. Yeah, and this is under right, you are. That's all four of them off now. I suppose I'd have to go and see Gary to get his ones off, because he wants his painting as well. So I'll go out and see Gary, get his off, and uh, then we'll take it from there and we'll paint all these together. See you in a minute. Okay, here we go. So I've got Gary's off as well. And uh, they come off just as easy, to be honest with you. So what I'll do, I'll separate these all out and um, give them a rub down. All I'm going to do is give them a rub down with 500. They don't actually look like they've been primed at all. So I'll just give them a slight key with some 500 wet and dry paper. And that should be good enough. Then I'll wipe them down with uh, a wax and grease remover. And uh, yeah, that'll be it. So just wanted to show you these as well. I got a set of these the other day. Um, I was watching the Moa Medic and 
a big problem when you're using car when you're cleaning carburetors out on old carburetors for like lawnmowers and stuff like that. Sometimes the main jet in the actual tube can get stuck in if you've got an ill-fitting screwdriver. And he come out of a way which was a great way to get them out. You drill them out with an eighth hole, and then you use one of these things. This is a little kit by Ryan Steig, made in Germany, which I got off of uh, Amazon. And you use these basically, these little um, extractor tools, you basically you drill a hole in the uh, main jet first of all for about an eighth, and then you tap that in and that grips onto the sides because it's got serrated edge. And then you can undo this with a nut and withdraw the, uh, the jet. Saves you throwing the carburetor away. They do them in various sizes. You buy that, that costs 25 pounds here in the UK. Yeah, thanks for the mower, mower medic for showing me that one. I have thought about other, the easy out ones where you can probably use them, but uh, they just look so much easier and they get a good bite on the brass jets when you want to pull them out. Anyway, that's that. Right, so let me get a bit of a uh, 500 paper. Is this 500 here? Yeah, I've got a bit of 500 here. Let's have a little look. So let's have a look at this one, for example. So this is literally just some 500 wet and dry paper. And all I'm going to do is literally just key the surface with the 500. There's no marks on these, so literally a key is all you really need. Dry sanding them, not even wet and sanding them. Because 500 is a fine enough grip for a base coat to adhere to, you see, without showing the scratches through. Although really, if you're using the metallic paint, you can go up to 600 or even 800, because sometimes metallic paints, which can be a lot thinner, can struggle. But I've always got away with 500, okay, but uh, in this case, that's all I'm gonna use. There we go, that's all I'm gonna do there. Maybe do the edges. How long does that take? Let's take a minute or so, in it? And then I'm gonna get some uh, Wax them, grease them over, or panel panel wipe if you want to call it that. Just put a bit on there. And then literally, wipe it over. Hold it underneath. And that takes all the grease and crap off. And that basically prepares it for spraying. And there you go, that's all I'm looking for. That, uh, that will dry very, very rapidly. And although you can see little scratches on there, that's actually smooth enough to take a base coat. I'm not going to prime these. I don't think they need priming. They weren't primed by the looks of them anyway. And the uh, silver paint that I've got is going to cover pretty well. Right, I'm going to do the rest of these now. I'll do exactly the same as that, and I'll see you when I've done that. Okay, they've all been wiped down now with wax and grease remover. They've had a 500 uh, sand down, as you know, and they're now ready. I've stuck them down to this sheet of paper here just to stop them blowing away and rolling about. As you can see, it's nice and simple. Look, just so that it gets them off the ground and they're all sort of floating in midair, sort of thing so I can get all around them. And it's just when you spray the gun, if you use a tin spray, aerosol spray, they can be quite powerful. So can a, a spray gun as well. So it just stops them from rolling over and flopping over. So that's what I've done there. So I'm just using that paint I use for my wheels. I've just put a little bit in a container there. I'm gonna be using my SRI Pro, which is a DeVilbis gun. I'm gonna be spraying it through a one mil tip and I'm gonna be spraying at 28 PSI. And I'm just gonna be literally pulling the trigger slightly, that's all, I'm just gonna be dusting it on. I always have the flow fully open, which is that one. That means if you pull it fully, you can pull it right back. But I have that fully open, but I control myself on the trigger just by pulling it gently like that. And the fan, you can either have it fully as a wide fan, which it is at the moment, or you can close that down to a, a narrower fan. But I'm just gonna leave it on the wide fan, as I say, because I'm gonna be controlling the, uh, the flow it comes out very, very gently. So as I say, you can probably do this with a spray can, but with a spray can, the paint's a lot thinner. And if you ain't careful with your control, very easy to get runs on, definitely on little small parts like this. So that's why I've opted for the, uh, the compressor-based spray system because you can control the pressure just by the amount you pressure on the trigger. And that's the only reason why I'm using this. Plus I've got this paint left over anyway. So let's just put that in there. Normally I'd use a strainer. I can't find a strainer at the moment, so I'm going without. Don't worry about that. Put that back on there like that. Right, let me get my mask on. I'll be back in a second. Let me go and put that hanging up. Right, I might sound a bit like Darth Vader, but uh, I'll try and stick with it. Let's stick that on there like that. Dial in 28 PSI. In fact, I'll probably go below 28 PSI. I'll go down to probably 20 bar. Yeah, it still comes out nicely. And I'll try and stick with you so you can see exactly how I'm doing it. There's me going. I'm just going to dust it on.
I'm barely pulling that trigger back. There we go, I'll just carry on, get these done, and I'll see you when I finish them. <sighs> Okie dokie. Right, they've been drying for about 10 minutes now. I'm just going to put on some gloves because uh, it's a bit messy, this paint. So, again, I've got some thinnest uh, clear mixed up here, 2 to 1 mix, Macamere. Again, use a strainer, not like me. Exactly the same. And I'm going to give this a dusting on coat as well, and then a second coat, which is all I'm going to do, and uh, that'll be the job finished then. Right, okay, finally got them done. That first one there, as you probably saw in the uh, first bit of video, that blew off the table. I had to rub that down, get some thinners on it, clean it all down, base coat it again, and then lacquer it again. But the rest of them, they did stick. It just so happens that that was one of the ones that I pulled up to have a look at all the way around to make sure that I got it and didn't stick it down firm enough. So it does pay to stick them down, believe me. Let's have a little bit of a closer look now. They've got to dry now. They've had just uh, two coats now of lacquer, very thin coats, and uh, that's going to be enough. This stuff goes off rock hard. Right, there we go. All as new now. I ain't got to do anything more to these now. The lacquer's lovely and glossy, so I'm just having to wait now till they uh, all go off. So that's the backs from there. And yeah, I'm happy with them. And as I say, tomorrow they'll be rock hard and uh, we'll be able to fit them straight to the car. There we go. Happy days. All right, there's nothing I can do in here now, so we'll come back tomorrow morning. These will be hard, and then we'll fit them to the car, so I'll see you then. And here we are the next day. I wish these really did dry that quick, but they didn't, obviously. But uh, they are dry now, and uh, we'll have a close look at them in a second. But I've got someone who's just popped down here. Get over here. Oi. Loafing about behind the camera here like he's uh, doing the old uh, producing. Look who's just turned up to check on these. I'm choosing the best four. And he reckons... He's going to have the best foot. In fact, they're all quality. You can have that one on the end, actually. You, eh? 
There's nothing wrong with that. You can pick them up now. Go on, you can touch them now. Let's show these how good they are. Take these little bits of paper out. Get the bits of paper out in between them. Don't drop them, will you? There you are, folks. Let me just show you how good these look, actually look. They're like factory. Absolutely lovely. And this lacquer, as you know, is uh, rock solid on there. Absolutely lovely. Look at that, look. Superb. Right, so, now they are marked up O. The backs go with the front, so you've got to put them in the right order. I thought you'd done them all, look. I can't do it all. Sure video. Yeah, well, you're going to do a video in a minute. And by putting these on your car, I've doubled the value of your bloody motor. Oh, yeah. Right, let's get rid of them. Right, so, as you probably well know... Did you do the back one? You ain't done the back ones either, look. I thought you'd done all these. I ain't touched the back. OR, what's that one? Well, that's an OR. So that one will go with, the, with that. So as you can see, it's got a lovely gloss on it. And they do look factory, to be honest with you. So I'm well happy with them. So we'll just get these outside now. Once we put them all together, and we'll put these on the car. So let's get outside and do that. Right, so over left. So what one's this one? Over left, here we go. So this is it. I'm just going to put the big piece in first. And you have to sort of tip this in at an angle. So, got to be careful here. This is where you want sort of good quality paint on the oil, so that's what I've, uh, I've got, and I obviously, so. Oh, that's that one on. Right, okay, so there. And now I have to clip this on. <coughs> so, you should just clip in. There you go. Did you hear that clipping? And there we go. Right, so I'll just put the other four on now. You haven't really got to see that, and uh, I'll That's show you the end. Eh? Hey? The other three on. What? You put the other three on, not the other four. Yeah, that's what I said, didn't I? No, you said you put the other four on. Right, I'm going to put the other three on. <laughs> and I'll see you in a second. And there we go. Absolutely lovely. Looks like a blinking brand new steering wheel again now, so I'm well pleased with that. None of them wear marks that was round there. There we go, let's go around the back and show you. So, as you can see there, all the way around. Lovely seams there, look. And, uh, yeah, well pleased with that. Lovely gloss, and they look factory, as I say. The colour actually is very, very similar, I'd imagine, to the original. Right, let's go and do yours then, get that sorted out. And uh, I think I will leave the video here. I'll save that for another day, because uh, I don't really want to pull this out now. I don't want the video to go on longer than necessary, but that'll be a day for another job. And over there, as you can see, the Triumph Acclaim has now been sold, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the chap's getting it picked up very, very shortly. So, uh, yeah, I'm no longer the owner of the Triumph Acclaim. And, uh, yeah, fantastic. I'm glad. And Sharon's very happy. And we can then start working on the uh, Reliant Regal, which is sitting over there. And that will be put underneath there. And uh, happy days. Oh, and let's just lock up. Look. Oh, yeah. There we go. Look, look at them mirrors. Look. Fantastic. Nice and clean, this motor. Now you've seen it. Look. And uh, as you can see, his wheels are still um, needing some work done to him. You're here today to do a video on them, aren't you? Yeah, I thought we'd have a go at it. So what he's going to do, the difference of what he's going to do to what mine's done, I've actually had mine completely sprayed, as you know, which are this uh, silver. But originally, the wheels are, what do they call this? Laser cut. What do they call that? Diamond cut. Diamond cut. They're just diamond cut on the edge of the spokes there, basically. And the insides there are like a graphite grey on, on Gary's wheels. But the only bit that's sort of peeled is the lacquer on the surface of the front. So what he's going to try and do is actually just sand down the surface, get to him, get him to a mirror polish, and then uh, obviously try and lacquer him over again, I think. Is that what you're going to do? We're going to have a go, yeah. What do you mean we're going to have a go? That's your video, not my video. Well, I'm going to get you involved. Get me involved? Unbelievable. Right, well, I'm going to finish my video here anyway, so... Um... If you want to see him have a go at refurbing one of these wheels, or doing all of them, but he'll only do one on camera, check out Scrap It Man's channel. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below there. And also, don't forget, check out my other videos and my playlist as well. If you do like my videos, hit the subscribe button down there, ring that little notification bell, set your preferences to all, that way you'll get notified every time I upload a video. And until then, thanks very much. I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now. Watch his next video on that. <laughs>